Thank God I'm free. But you got free by confrontation. By Jesus confronting the principalities of darkness. By church members and you didn't know before you got saved confronting hell, challenging the demons and commanding the prisoners to come forth and be set free. Amen. And bless God, we're going to have a thousand people sitting here looking at us, Praise praising God, worshiping our God and our Savior Jesus, because intercessors Hallelujah. on this holy ground enter in and confront the powers of darkness and set the captives free. In Jesus' name. Create a Holy Ghost prison break. Amen. Hallelujah. Right through. Yes. Praise God. God will invite you in the confrontation. God will say, let's go do battle, son. Come on, girl. We're going to go fight some demons and set some prisoners Hallelujah. free. Victory is guaranteed. Amen. But it looks real. And it is real. And the battle is real. And the fiery darts are real. And if you're not right in step with them, you can get wounded. Listen to me, preachers out there. Some of you have had swim and fell, not because you had evil hearts. Most of you don't have evil hearts. But because you just got out of step. Amen. you got to stick close to God. Amen. You can only stay in step with the Lord by intercessory prayer and study of His Word. I know when to turn left because I know what the Word says. I know when to turn right because I know what the Word says. I know when to stop because I know what the Holy Ghost voice sounds like. Amen. You've got to stay close to not become a victim, even when God's invited you to the battle. Amen. Now, if you're in battle because your foolishness drove you there, or your flesh sucked you there, you're on your own till you repent. Amen. Amen. I tell people, I'm, I know all kinds of... Look, Brother Tony was, was, was a, a, a saved Holy Ghost filled police officer. Before I went into full-time ministry, I was a saved Holy Ghost filled police officer. And I knew Holy Ghost filled Christians that would come whining to me, why did God let me get a ticket? Well, let me look at the ticket. Do an 85 and a 45. That's why God let you get a ticket. Because you're acting foolish and your foolishness got you out beyond God's protecting grace. Amen. And grace comes back over you when you repent. Why did God let me get pregnant? Because your foolishness made you jump in the back seat of a car. But His grace will restore you and bring you a godly husband yes. that will turn that act of sin into a family of God. That's how good He is. He'll redeem everything that Satan met for evil. But you've got to stay in harmony with Him. You've got to stay in step with Him. And when you get out of step, we used to have something in the Marine Corps called a change step. You ever hear that, Tony? Yes. He was in the Army. You'd be marching along, you'd get out of step, and you change step like that, it'll put you back in step. In the spirit realm, you call it a change step, a repentance step. You get back in step with God. That way you're hidden in His shadow. You're not out too far, you're not back too far, you don't catch fiery darts you weren't intended to catch. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Did yes, you hear that? Yes, Amen. yes, yes. Did you hear that? Amen. Amen. He covers Amen. you under His wings, but you get out of step, get out from under the wings, you can catch a fiery dart. The second you repent, He removes the dart, puts out the fire, brings healing and deliverance, and brings you right back into step with Him. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus. I've done a lot of change stepping in my yeah. ministry. Amen. A lot. <laughs> Somebody say, me too, Pastor. Me too, Pastor. Say it like you're honest. Me, me too, too, Pastor. Pastor. And you know what? You're going to. The rest of your your ministry, the rest of your walk, the rest of your call with the Lord, you're constantly going to have to adjust. We'll get into that one of these days in another teaching. Amen? Amen. All right. Now, before we get totally into the Word, boy, Jesus. I feel the glory of God all over Jesus. me right now. <laughs> How many of you feel the presence of the Holy Spirit? Oh, yes. We have the absolute honor, and I mean that with all my heart. We have the absolute honor to have among us, dwelling with us as a church family member, and as part of the foundational ministry of New Day Christian Center, a prophet of God. 
that I watch every one of his postings and ministry teachings. I really do. I'm not politically correct. And if somebody came in and said I'm a prophet, I'd sit down and everyone and say, Brother or sister, you're not a prophet. You may prophesy, we all may prophesy, but that doesn't make you a prophet. There's a difference between the gift of prophecy and the office, government office of a prophet. Mm -hmm. yes. One day we're going to teach on all fivefold ministries, and you'll understand that the office of a prophet is so powerful. Please hear this. <clears throat> the office of a prophet is so powerful that just his servants to walk in the court of a king. Amen. The prophet doesn't even have to show up. Amen. He sends his messengers and they say, thus said for Yes. Amen. That's how much authority a prophet yes. has. Yes. All the way through the New Testament. Yes. Old Testament, look at it. Yes. He'd send Gehazi. He'd send Elijah. Mm -hmm. The prophets would send ministers to speak to kings. The prophet wouldn't even leave his chamber. Amen. How dare you? Amen. God isn't about any king. Amen. Amen. And I speak for God. And a prophet speaks for God. Amen. That's not an arrogance. It's just a reality Amen. of position. Hallelujah. I don't care who you are. When you walk into court and you're looking at the judge that you've never met and you've never been in that courtroom, you say, yes, Your Honor. Amen. You immediately submit to that position of government. Amen. That's what it is in the spirit realm under a prophet. A prophet is so, supposed to be so representative of the kingdom of God that the atmosphere of every place he stands is changed in the submission of his presence. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to meditate on that. But that's straight out of the Bible. A prophet is so ordained of God to turn governments mm -hmm. to em literally embrace and change the natural realm that where he stands, the kingdom's automatically representative and is automatically manifested to where water parts. Heavens rain, heavens don't rain, Amen. wind comes, fowls come, water dries up. Yes. They control the elements. Well, praise God. Jesus. Glory to Jesus. It's all over me right now. God. They control this natural realm. We've got a lot of people calling themselves prophets that may be on the fringe of birthing a prophetic ministry. Mm -hmm. They may have a gift of prophecy, but they're not prophets. Mm -hmm. All prophets are birthed out of separation, out of seclusion, out of loneliness, it's just oh it's a prophet's path. <laughs> Out of the heat of the desert. Let me tell you something. In the spirit realm, in the heat of the desert is where apostles and prophets are birthed. You look in the New Testament, the great apostle Paul didn't do anything until he sat in the desert of Damascus by himself at the feet of Jesus for 15 years. Why? To be imparted and to drive out everything he thought he knew and everything he lived by before he met Christ. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it got to absolutely without opinion and without preconceived purpose let the kingdom of God flow unhindered. Apostles and prophets are different breeds. Yes. Starting first with the great ministry of a prophet, we have one in our presence. Praise God. Amen. Amen. And I've watched his teachings now listen, prophets don't have to have fire in their eyes and don't have to be frothing at the mouth and don't have to be hairy and wear a, a girdle and all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. Paul was an apostle of God and they say he was just a short, chubby little bald guy that didn't talk all that well. But when he spoke, demons fled. Hallelujah. Praise God. And when he walked into a city that was completely paganistic, he drove out the darkness and raised up churches. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. What do you think God can do in Victory Meadows if you actually have faith? Anything, everything. Hallelujah. Listen here, you can do it if you'll walk in faith. Amen. Now, Brother Robert Lee Williams is somebody I've known for years through our internet ministries. We've stepped, stayed in touch. By the divine plan of God, God brought him out of Missouri, brought him to Dallas, Texas, and added him to this church. 
And I know that for a fact. He is ordained to be part of the foundation of this great work. Amen. 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 And we love him. Love him. And I'm telling you right now, out there, if you're a pastor and you watch this ministry and you watch this service, I put my seal of approval on this prophet of God. A gentle, kind soul, but with authority, and sees clearly into the Spirit, and speaks clearly from the heart of God. And I say that with all confidence. I've watched him. I've listened to him. I've watched him on this holy ground in this church. And God speaks clearly and mightily through this gentle, yes. loving, peace-spirited man. He's a prophet. He's a prophet for this time, for this nation, for this hour. Amen? Amen. His website is godsmiracleministry.com As he says on his internet, blowing the shofar for Jesus Christ. Amen. Go to that website. Watch his postings. I validate him as a member of this church as a future uh, prophet to America. Because God's yeah. beginning to already open up doors for him to go out and, and establish uh, the order of the Lord and the prophetic ministry to other churches as a guest minister and then come back home to us as a prophet in this house. God. Amen? Amen. Amen? Brother Robert, would you stand and come forward, brother, and bring your belief with you? And I want everybody... Enter into spirit. Enter into. Well, I want this on video. Really? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Just stand right there, bro. Stand right there on Facebook, please. Brother Robert received a new tallif after blessing me with this one. That is highly anointed. of science, wonders, and miracles in it, and I wear it with great pride. Yes. Brother Robert called me and asked me, he said, my new tulip is coming out, which is a prayer shawl. We're not legalistic here. We don't wear a tulip every time we pray. I wear it when I choose to. I wear it at home frequently in intercessory prayer, but it's also a point of contact. I believe this very possibly was the aprons, what was the aprons that were made when they said that they brought aprons from the body of Paul. I, I can't verify that completely, but Paul wasn't walking around with a stack of uh, cut up cloth. I believe they cut up his belief. That's just my personal opinion. And made aprons out of it because he wore it constantly and prayed in it. And there is a point of contact in <coughs> tangible material. In Acts chapter 19, verse 11, it says that God brought special miracles by the hand of Paul so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons. And diseases departed from them, and evil spirits went out of them. That's Acts 19, verse 11. Brother Tom, if you stand behind Brother Robert. Like to get the rest of the church to begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Father God. 
He spoke to me last night in prayer from the prophet for your man. And you said, as I touched this holy cloth dedicated to intercession and prayer and communion, that you would double the tangible anointing on Brother Robert's ministry and on his life. Father God, I lay hands on this belief now and I raise it before you. Dedicated to setting captives free. The Holy Communion. The Holy Prayer. The signs, wonders, and miracles. Lord, feel every fiber of this cloth with your glory. Feel every weave of this cloth with Shekinah, tangible, saturated, glow. Let the call of this man be brought to a new level. Just as Elisha said to Elijah, I want a double portion of the Spirit that rests on you. Father, let double come on Robert. Double anointing. Double glory. Double power. Double authority. Double manifestations of signs, wonders, and miracles. Let him come to the other side of Jordan. Seas, part. Waters that have resisted, part. Part, saith the Lord. Come, man of God, to the other side. Come, man of God, to a higher level. Come, man of God. Up hither, saith the Lord. Up hither, saith the Lord. Up hither, saith the Lord. For I will draw you, even this hour, into my presence and into my glory. You have dreamed dreams and you have seen visions, but you will walk into them now, saith the Lord. You will reach out and touch the other side. And yes, I will even deposit into your hands and deposit into your lips a holy fire. Open my hands. A holy fire from this day forward. A double anointing. Burning coals on your lips saith the Lord. A tangible presence of my spirit in every cell of your body as you receive this mantle in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Double, saith the Lord. Double, saith the Lord. Double glory. Double power. Double presence. Double manifestations. Rise up, man of God. Rise up and receive, man of God. Rise up and walk out of the cave. Walk and declare. Walk and prophesy. Walk and I will manifest with miracles. With miracles. The promised ministry that I said is here now. The promised ministry that I spoke. Today is the day. Now it is yours. Walk in it, saith the Lord God. Walk in it, saith the Lord God. Walk in it, saith the Lord God. In Jesus' name. Double. 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 Double than you've ever experienced from this day forward. Boldness. A holy boldness, said the Lord. 
A boldness, saith the Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus, it is sealed. Let it be done to the glory of God. And the church said, Amen. 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 Give him a great day. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody else have a word? Hallelujah. Anybody else have a word in their heart for this man of God before he's seated? Hallelujah. This is a very appropriate time. If you do, please come up and speak it. This is, this is a birthing of a higher level ministry right here. A very holy thing taking place today. Come up here, Liz. Come up here. I don't know whether I myself have any type of property before in my life, but for the water, we have a little old Jesus. And something has happened here today because I have prayed about today and I expected some really special confirming things to be said to the yes. they've been said by pastor what is happening now is part of it, it's just it's part of this whole birthing that's happening right now yes. and forward. you are a true man of God and I've heard you and you told pastor about how this anointing is going to be increased and it should be known to the man and he said nobody else but I think you mentioned four people and you were one of the four could tell him that don't you know that it was true. And so you're a humble man, which is a beautiful thing. Because a lot of people call themselves prophets are all puffed up. Yes. And I believe sometimes don't really think of the word of God. But you, you are very gentle. Yes. And the Lord is going to just use you like nobody has ever seen you.